Baker's Memorial is just right there here at NASA US Space Rocket Center on Huntsville Alabama the Rocket City lots of bananas right there because this was Miss Baker she was a squirrel monkey born in 1957 died in 1984 probably around you know in her late 20s the first US animal to fly in space and return alive to Earth May 28 1959 there's the husband, Big George, husband of Miss Baker, died January 8, 1979 at the age of 60. So we're here at U.S. Space Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm here at the U.S. Space and Rocket Museum here in Huntsville, Alabama. As you can see, there's this colossal rocket right there. And there's a very tall rocket right there too. We're gonna see here also uh, Miss Baker, the very first animal that went in space. And that animal is uh, has a grave here, somewhere here. This is U.S. Space and Rocket Museum just one of the several space museums of NASA. So we're going to explore this. This is my second time here. The first time I was here was a few years ago and then they were closed already at night. So this is the first time that I'll enter this here in Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. This place won Unification Award by the city of Huntsville. We're here now at U.S. Space Rocket Center. There's this Miss Baker Memorial. Miss Baker Memorial. Because Miss Baker was a squirrel monkey born in 1957 and died in 1984. So she was in her late 20s. She passed away. And she was the first U.S. astronaut to fly to space and return to Earth in the year 1959. Some people are nice enough to put some bananas there, and you could see here too, Big George. Big George was the husband of Miss Baker, right in 1979, age 60. I was two years old, so this is the name of Miss Baker. You could see here, that's the entrance where we entered a while ago, and this is the U.S. Space and Rocket Center sign, right here home of space camp there are several NASA locations in the country and this is just one of them I guess there are like 10 of them and there's the NASA sign it is a visitor center and there are lots of planets right there you could see over there there's planet Jupiter Uranus but here near the entrance near the main entrance there's Mars Earth Venus, Mercury, and the Sun right here next to the entrance. See this is the entrance and there's a sculpture of an astronaut. Let's see. It's, it's dedicated to those who, whose pioneering spirit is inspired generations to explore beyond existing boundaries in a never-ending quest for knowledge. The name of the sculptor is John Hare. He made it in 2010. There are a couple of more there too, but near the entrance, there's one here. So this is the main entrance. As you can see, there is a gift shop. And right here on the entrance carpet is a US Space and Rocket Center carpet. It's so nice. You could see here too, there's a welcome to Huntsville. Lots of brochure here too, if you want to explore Huntsville. There are lots of brochures here you could take with you. There's the, on the picture is the historic Huntsville Depot. Depot. It was built in 1860 
and there's the Big Spring International Park as well. Huntsville is, is really a nice place. There's another here too. Lots of brochures here. Welcome to Huntsville. Vaughn Braun Center. And there's also the Huntsville Botanical Garden. I guess this is worth for me to come back, you know, just one, one more weekend. And maybe watch another show that I missed here in the Rocket Center. Lots of more brochures here. See, they don't allow here drones and all children should be 18 years and above but if you're younger than that you have to be accompanied by an adult at all times no weapons and no smoking e-cigarettes and any vapor vaping um, and you could scan this code if you want to tell them your experience here and this is the and there's the US Space and Rocket Center souvenir pennies Here also the space camp. See, there's another U.S. Space and Rocket Center souvenir pennies. This is a nice gift shop. There are lots to see. See, there are T-shirts, some caps. Some of these are maybe some sweets, some caps. NASA caps and if you want to have some models of rockets you could buy it here uh, nice rockets here this is the Saturn V and this is the NASA SLS space launch system and this is the Saturn as well this is a flying model rocket kit. Some nice NASA, sh NASA shirts. Let's see how much it is. This is small and well, maybe it might not be that expensive. Let's see over this one. Let me see. This is just $11. Not bad. That's good. And the shirts are like about $17. See, this is the Artemis. This Artemis is the model now, the mission to return back to Moon. NASA caps, really nice. I'm become, I'm really a big fan of NASA, guys. There's the moonwalking there. This is nice, July 20, 1969. I think I might buy that one later. See, Alabama blast off. U.S. Space and Rocket Center caps. This U.S. Space Rocket Center, Huntsville, Alabama. Nice bags. Nice mugs. Rocket Center, U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Lots of nice sweatshirts. See Rocket City. Nice sweatshirts right here. Of course, bags for lady tote bags. Some shirts. This is nice. Eh? Yeah. Tumblers, NASA sweatshirts, NASA mug, NASA shirt. There's some more magnets. Some magnets right here. Some models. Saturn. Oh, that's nice. You could buy like a model of. Saturn it could even revolve using a battery. It's nice. They're revolving guys See That's the constellation a Pluto Saturn Neptune Earth. I like that that because it's moving around It's orbiting yeah. Yeah, That's nice Some shirts nice uh, headwear for winter some small bags for children some nice tumblers legacy tees some t-shirts see some spacesuits these for adults and these are for kids and some of some ni nice tees nice tees right here some tumblers there some spacesuits for kids. 
nice spacesuits for kids and astronaut headgear for kids I think that those are for kids some shirts uh, these are really nice some nice pens of course pens notebooks mouse pads jigsaw puzzles jigsaw puzzles I thought they were mouse, mouse pads my bad some of the paintings and some of the books nice ones this space is just all about space rockets and some plush comet buddy some puzzles other puzzles push Ven Venus buddy for $22.95 see these are nice there's also an ATM here guys if you want to withdraw some cash see she's trying on that headgear so this is the US Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville Alabama I'm now here inside just past the gift shop the Smithsonian affiliate it's also associated with the Science and Technology Center This is a nice Explore Marshall project, Alabama Space and Rocket Center. It's dedicated by the citizens of Alabama. So Moon to Mars project, Life on Earth, Space Technology, Space Technology, and then Humans in Space. I believe this is the International Space Station. Solar System and Beyond. And this is um, Artemis and Beyond. This Artemis is the project now, hoping to return back to Moon for humans. It's been almost over 50 years that we haven't been back to the Moon, and now hoping for that thing to happen. This is the Lunar Lander. That's the simulator for today. And here is the so if you want to try the simulator, you need to be taller than this. You need to, these are the height requirements if you want to try this simulators. Moonshot simulator, G4 simulator, hypership, and another hypership to ride with an adult. The other one is solo. Yeah. So we're now here inside. I already bought my ticket earlier guys. We're gonna go here first to the Intuitive Planetarium. And after this, I'm gonna enter there in the Space Museum entrance. I already bought my ticket there in NASA Visitor Center. They're nice enough to refund my ticket last night for $17 because I missed it. About the strongest telescope ever invented. But now, I'm gonna watch the show here. And there's this NASA sign, NASA logo right here nice coca-cola recycling container and there's this Orion model there's also this space launch system model we're headed now to the planetarium the intuitive 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 planetarium to watch the solar system show this is the Carina Nebula using the Hubble telescope this is the, uh, the black hole, Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. And this is the Crab Nebula by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. And this is the Lobster Nebula, Spitzer Space Telescope. So we're gonna watch the show here at Intuitive Planetarium for 2 p.m. It's about 10 minutes now prior to the show, and I bought it for $12. Well, it in it's included with my ticket of $39 actually. So, this is the planetarium. They have concessions here.
This is the waiting area. This is the waiting area. But it's time now for two o'clock show. Where people wait before the show. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I made it back. <laughs> I missed the 1 p.m. though, but I had the next right. time. I like, I like this one. I'm giving it, so yeah. you're all set there. Thank Enjoy you so the show. Much. Thank you. Yep. Entering the planetarium. the planetarium guys here in Huntsville, Alabama lots of people in there lots of people waiting for a show it's about the solar system good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome to the Eternal Planetarium at this time, I am glad to inform you that this afternoon's showing of Our Place in Space is sold out. What this means is, at this time, if you happen to have any room to move towards the center of your row, I am going to ask that you do so at this time. This is just so for those who may be arriving late, well, you won't have to have anyone climb over you. Why we are seeing aurora borealis like in Finland or in Alaska popular for people you know they always chase it they always want to have a picture with it yes do you have uh, is did you, was it there it, uh, so it, I'm trying to think I don't think we have a visual for it in our show per se I think we can enhance it uh, you probably wouldn't have seen it in the show though but that is due to the magnetic field of the earth so mm -hmm. at the north and south poles all those magnetic field lines kind of merge together mm -hmm. and that is energy from the sun this electromagnetic radiation that is kind of following those magnetic field lines mm -hmm. and where it's meeting our atmosphere where it's following those lines that's where we get that i want to make sure i say this right i think that emission where we see that light where we see that color as the northern lights the southern lights aurora borealis well, that's so that's due to the the magnetic field mm -hmm. of our sun yeah. and what's that behind us so this is, is actually an image from the james webb space telescope of the oh. carina nebula a region of the uh carina nebula called the cosmic cliffs so this is a stellar nursery where star formation is taking place and it's got this eroded edge here from stars just out of frame on the image mm -hmm. just above that are uh, their ultraviolet radiation is stripping away this gas and dust and so this mm -hmm. stellar formation region where we see all of these stars being born i see it's and beautiful and what can you say you know about some people like in, on youtube and social media they say that that nobody really went to moon it was just really all hopes i really believe it happened sure no. yeah but yeah. why they just for views uh, it's hard telling why yeah. people might say that um sometimes i joke in my show and we'll get to the earth and i'll say you know spoiler alert it's not flat and you have all these people that like to have their, their different opinions and some you know i've i've looked into some of those theories uh, myself and some of those are interesting i can see where people get hooked onto them and yeah. where some things might appear to be right than than others mm -hmm. but no i'm with you i fully believe that we went to the moon oh, yeah. that we're going back of course mm -hmm. um i don't know why people would think otherwise yeah. first human will make it to mars by before 2040 uh, do you think when you said that uh, moon could just be a pit stop for next time with artemis do you think that the, they will land first and the moon again before mars or um, Mars first and then Moon? So like on the way to Mars? Yeah. And probably not. I'm not sure exactly what the process to Mars is going to look like. What we're doing with the Moon right now mm -hmm. is setting up a, a space station mm -hmm. around the Moon called Gateway. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to practice what it's going to be like living on Mars. Because ideally, we want to have a space station around Mars yeah. when we have people on the surface. Mm -hmm. And so we're practicing all these different theories and all of these different ideas that we have mm -hmm. for what sustaining human life on another planet might look like much closer to home though where we can get to the moon in just a couple of days it's much safer right it's much cheaper to go to the moon um, not cheap by any means but cheaper then once we have everything refined everything ready to go with what we've done at the moon that's when we're going to be ready to go off to mars with people and have you heard about the space neptune the, space neptune that um for for one thousand one hundred twenty five thousand dollars and if you could be one of the eight lucky lucky eight people then you could be there in space beyond the Karman line and I don't know if you heard about that. I have that. not. I know of a couple, like, uh, there's Deer Moon, hashtag Deer Moon is one I've heard, mm -hmm. where it's a bunch of um, 
like social media celebrities mm -hmm. more or less i'd say like youtube influencers mm -hmm. and the like right. that are gonna hop on starship and go around the moon um, i believe the far side uh, of the moon so there is i mean just with all of these private organizations uh, um these yeah. privately funded things as well you get things like that where civilians can just go up and get to space, space can go around the moon things like that which i love i'm all for that i think that yeah. that's absolutely fantastic yeah. and, and lastly um are you familiar with dale, dale strong Dale Strong. Dale Strong. Is that is that name sounds familiar to you? It does not. Uh, is this Madison County? Is it is. I'm I'm newish to the area. I've only been here about a year. The one that we just got elected as a new congressman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I would not know. No. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering because uh, um, I think he's a politician and then I think he just won and he's the new and he's doing a great job. Okay. Yeah. He's I got know. like space policy and things. Uh, no. I think he supports this and uh, he always talks about NASA and awesome. all that stuff. I'm all and for he it. just won and he was the chairman before and now he's the uh, a congressman now. Okay. Yeah. A newly elected congressman that Trump. I don't know if you're Trump or. Biden, but uh, yeah. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much. Yes, for absolutely. No, I'm so glad much. you were able to make yeah, it to a show really as well. It. And, and I usually don't repeat a place to visit, but I think this one is awesome. It's worth. This serves my third time. This is my second. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank well, you we so much. It. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Yep. You too. Thank Take you. care. Enjoy okay. The yeah. That's good. This is the Carina Nebula. Nice picture here in the U.S. Space Rocket Center. Huntsville, Alabama, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is the telescope. Next is the black hole, taken by the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. And this is the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. And next is the Crab Nebula, taken by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. This is the Chandra X-ray Observatory. And the lastly, we have here the Lobster Nebula, taken by the Spitzer Space Telescope. And this is the Spitzer Space Telescope. Here in Huntsville, Alabama, U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Hello guys, we're here at U.S. Space Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama. And this is the map of Mars. What's special about this map is that it's showing the largest volcano on the solar system the Olympus Mons that's the largest volcano in the solar system look at that and that Olympus Mons is 100 times larger than the largest volcano on earth Mauna Loa so and also this information here shows that the Earth and Mars are about 35 million miles apart at their nearest distance and also could be as far as 233 million miles apart when the planets are on the opposite sides of the Sun. So this is the map of Mars. Really, really amazing. I know you know the map of Earth but this is the map of Mars. Again, that's Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, which is 100 times larger than Mauna Loa, the largest volcano on Earth located in Hawaii.
Hello guys, we're here at the US Space Rocket Center and right behind me is the multi-axis trainer because several years ago you know they they had a Mercury mission and then they had to train the astronauts just in case this happens in space so since that never happened in space for a long long time so they discontinued that training but they continued that experience for the public so that's the aviation challenge and these are the flight simulators and this is the max flight experience there are two guys inside and those are the ones inside on that max flight simulator she's a graduate of the advanced space academy in 1995 and she's a graduate also of the advanced space academy in 1996 her name is Christina Koch and this astronaut's name is Samantha Cristoforetti over here on May 28, 1959, uh, before a man orbited the Earth in space, they had two monkey knots in space before humans. See, these are the monkey knots. And one of them is Miss Baker. She had a Hall of Fame award inducted in January 29, 2005. So these are the monkey knots. I wonder how long they traveled to space and I wonder also if they were eating bananas it looks like that they're eating some something during their travel see on this newspaper Miss Baker was eating some bananas and this was their ride they were inside this and they returned back to earth alive and that's how they departed this is the international space station science on orbit entrance to learn a lot about the international space station no food and drink allowed no running and no climbing allowed so this is the international space station and as you know it's visible from earth and there's a website to find out the schedules and where you could see it Discovery and Enterprise Shuttle Experience. So other filters take the stink out. Yeah, they have these other filters. So it doesn't, it never smells bad in the outer space, even the poop, because they have that other filter. This is the other filter. In space, losing power can mean losing your life. in 1997 a supply ship crashed into the Russian space station Mir damaging its electricity supplying solar collectors so badly that the crew nearly had to abandon the station see that see I see some leaves right here growing food and there's the fan turning off the fan turning on the fan and there's the plant the battery sun and communication they use radio to stay contact with the ground control and heat to cook so I wonder if they could cook right there ah, and interior lights so they have some lights in there and this is the monitor solar collector these panels convert sunlight into electrical energy because they use solar energy there in international space station and they recycle the air see electrolysis I think they the carbon dioxide that we exhale is poisonous and we need oxygen to live in space we kill two birds with 
several chemical reactions, spacecraft air scrubbers break apart carbon dioxide into disposable carbon and breathable oxygen. It is a touch screen. And that's, yeah, International Space Station. See, what am I looking at? See, that's the space. NASA. So, this screen displays the current crew members on board the ISS. So, they are now at the ISS. And this is the live feed map that shows where the ISS, ISS is currently in its orbit around the Earth. And this is the, the display, it's displaying the Greenwich Mean Time digital clock. Payload Operations Integration Center. So this seems to be the integration center, the payload operations integration center. And this is the international effort, the International Space Station, of course. And these are the countries participating with the International Space Station. Yeah. United States, Russia, and a lot more. See? Off limits here. No, no no visitors are allowed inside but these are the flags yeah, and this is the buoyancy training and they're learning how to communicate underwater this is inside. See, inside that. And this is just the parts of International Space Station. A lot of it. It started smaller than that and it got bigger and bigger because they had added some extensions to it. I know one part of it was cupola. Here, express rack. And this is one of the astronauts. This seems to be the International Space Station replica. And this is the astronaut. And you know, in, in International Space Station, in space, there's no down. Down doesn't make sense there. Now look at this. These are the food that they eat in space. The pasta with shrimp. Shortbread cookies. They have here we have here the cream spinach, cream spinach there, okay, the shortbread cookies, pasta with shrimp, macadamia nuts, sausage patty, green tea, these are the beverages, Kona coffee, then now the apple nut bear bar, Risotto al pesto, spaghetti with meat sauce, not much food, huh? Yeah. I'm sure, I hope that they're not having any food shortages. Teriyaki vegetables, broccoli al gratin, Borodinsky bread, and some canned foods, and a lot more. inside the International Space Station. Yeah, see? 
Oh, there's a treadmill. <laughs> That's the treadmill. For exercise. I have a laptop here. And this is, I think, where they sleep. And there's Christina Koch. I think she's probably up there currently right now in the space station. That's where they sleep, I think. That's the view from the cupola. Lots of badges. This is the standard interface rack. The Robonaut. Each arm is about two feet eight inches. That's Robonaut. That's how they eat in space. Portable breathing apparatus. Exercise rack. Microbiology. That's what he's doing. That's what it is. That. So this is the International Space Station, guys. This is the International Space Station replica. It's really, really nice. This is the treadmill, of course. What, that's what I mentioned earlier. The, all the foods that they eat in space and their beverages. Crumbs are not really good in space because these crumbs, like from the bread, cookies, could go to astronauts eyes and it could cause problems so there are no breads in space no crumbs allowed so this is the international space station guys inside this is the flooring here in the international space station and there's this diagram and if you look up you'll see the cupola it's like I'm in the cupola and that's the view of earth and it's really slightly moving slowly moving yeah I could view the earth from this cupola it's just like this
the name of this is discovery that's discovery and that's Zaria so have a restaurant here crew galley but I think they're already closed That was really fun when we experienced the International Space Station. We're headed to the next one now. There's the shuttle pathfinder. So that's why they just made it as an exhibit here. But they're receiving some donations from the public to support the restoration of it. This is the seasoned global traveler. NASA space shuttles have traveled 542 million miles, making 21,000 Earth orbits. Each vehicle consisted of around 2.5 million moving parts. It's a big rocket right there. That's the Pathfinder. Working fleet. NASA's working space shuttle fleet was comprised of five orbiters Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. Endeavour, Challenger. Enterprise, the first space shuttle. There's a good jet here, NASA. Astrotech. A shuttle. This was a shuttle training aircraft. Let's see if they are going to allow visitors to enter that.
habitat wall. in here <clears throat> it's a big big flag I cannot even reach it US flag place. Lots of walking. I think this is the top floor. And there's a view outside. safety, bunk beds, closets, there's a mirror. Someone. There's another view to see outside. Guys, that's it for this habitat one. We're entering the habitat two. Public visitors allowed here. Personnel? Uh, uh, just personnel. Uh, All no, public. Personnel over there. You need help. It's not that you go to that office. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to see it. See it habitat one and habitat two.
there's this rocket very nice tall huge rocket here in the rocket city Huntsville, Alabama there's this Eads Cosmos energy depletion so it's for kids Of course, there's a restaurant here also, Mars Grill, Mars Grill restaurant, but I suggest you just rather eat before you arrive here because you don't have time to eat there because everything here is enjoyable and you don't have time really to eat and if you could just eat before you arrive here that would be best, it's a nice rocket, it's really cute. All their trash cans here have this sign, special waste, like you are in outer space, in the moon. Into Mars, right here. This is Jordi to Mars. You can go up in there for a photo op, put your face in there, you're wearing a spacesuit. And there's Mars Grill, a restaurant. Lots of flags. It's one of their flight simulators, Hypership. Blue Origins Mannequin Skywalker. NASA's great observatories. There's Spitzer. There's Webb. There's Chandra. And there's Compton. This is Chandra Glass Mirror Blank. Here at NASA. Hubble. Chandra X-ray Observatory.